Motion activated floodlights have been around for many years and they're great security products, but they don't integrate into a typical smart home. Our new Z-Wave Plus floodlight sensor changes all that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn your standalone motion activated floodlights into smart home connected floodlights. Now before I go ahead and install it, let's just take a quick look at how these units are typically configured. First of all, on the front of the unit, you're going to see the sensor at the bottom, and you'll see two different floodlight bulb sockets at the top. All of these are adjustable with respect to their position. If you look at the back side, you'll see there are three wires coming out of the floodlight sensor. The black wire is a hot wire that goes to 120 volts. That power goes into the sensor, and then when a relay trips, it comes out of the red wire. The red wire is tied to the black wires of both bulb sockets. Now on the other end of the circuit, you'll see a neutral wire is connected both to the bulb sockets and then also back to the motion sensor. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is replace the existing motion sensor with our new floodlight sensor. And uh, before we do that though, let me just take a quick look at what's inside the box. Uh, we've packed it with an install guide. Uh, there's some mounting hardware and then the sensor itself. Now, if you look at the sensor, you'll see it's exactly the same wiring scheme as the existing one. There's a white neutral wire, a black hot wire, and a red load wire. What I need to do with the existing a uh, floodlight fixture though is snip the neutral wire and snip the red wire so I'll be able to unscrew and remove the sensor. Okay, so that's the plan. Well, let's get on it. The first step is going to be to snip the white neutral wire and the red load wire. Now when you do this, make sure that you leave an inch or two of wire material inside the fixture. You, you need to have enough material in there so that you can strip those wires and attach them to the new sensor. After the wires are cut, I'm going to remove the existing sensor just by unscrewing it. Before installing the new sensor, I'm gonna go into the hardware bag and find the lock nut and put that on the threaded end of the arm this lock nut will help me secure the sensor in place in the right position. Now I'm going to thread the wires for the new sensor through the hole and screw the new sensor in place. Here's where the lock nut comes in handy. Position the sensor just where it needs to be and then tighten things down with the lock nut. The last step is to connect the wires together. The red wires need to be connected together and the white wires need to be connected together. For this step, I'm gonna use my wire strippers and crimpers and I'm going to take about three quarters of an inch of insulation off of each wire. Once the wires are stripped, they're going to be twisted together, and then I'm going to take the crimping pieces, the crimping connectors from the hardware bag, and I'm gonna use my crimping tool to secure them in place. Feel free to cut any excess wire off, like I'm doing here, if you find that you have a big surplus of it. Here's one of the crimp connectors. It just goes over the connection. There's a metal band on the inside of the crimp connector. Just put that in the crimper, squeeze, and that will secure the connection. Once that's done, just try to pull the wires out to make sure that the connection is secure. I'm gonna repeat that process now for the white wires. Okay. 
Okay, well that completes the fixture wiring. The next step will be to mount it back to your house. When you do so, remember the black wire goes to hot and the white wire goes to neutral. Once it's mounted on the house, you can test it for operation, make sure the motion works okay, and you'll be able to add it to your smart home system. As always, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.